a highly regarded methodology used in design, engineering, and business fields to promote innovation is known as design thinking. As shown here, design thinking consists of seven interrelated phases. The first three, understand, explore, and define, involve developing a deep understanding of the impact of the design. Included at the top of the list are the vast bodies of scientific concepts that govern the natural world. For example, understanding exactly how the moon's gravitational pull affects tides on Earth is essential to the development of new tidal energy generators that hold great potential for reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. As demonstrated in the technical videos, you will see how 123D design software can help anyone, regardless of their prior artistic or technical background, engage in the process of ideation. These same tools will enable you to take this or other projects of your choice through the remaining stages of design thinking that include prototyping, refinement, and presentation of final solution. Knowing how important knowledge of science is to the design thinking process, we now present the following overview of friction. Friction is a force that resists motion when two objects or surfaces are in contact. Understanding friction is critical for the design of any objects or systems. Without friction and the force of gravity, this skateboarder, for example, would not be able to pull any of his tricks. In fact, skateboarding would be impossible. Friction created between tires and pavement on the freeway allows cars to maintain traction and stay on the road. Friction is what enables the cars to brake and stop. While there are many positive applications for friction, there are, however, many instances when you want to minimize friction. For example, reducing friction is critical in the design of mechanical systems, such as the internal components of car engines, where reducing friction by means such as lubrication increases energy performance and increases the life of the engine. There are two fundamental forms of friction, kinetic and static. Imagine that the man in this diagram is pushing the heavy object across a hardwood floor. If he starts out only applying a small amount of force, the object won't move. Its motion is prevented by static friction. In this scenario, the force of friction is greater than the applied force. If he continues to apply more force, the object, if it's not super heavy, will eventually break free and slide. This is kinetic friction. When kinetic friction occurs in a linear direction, it's often referred to as sliding friction. This person will still need to apply some force to keep the box sliding forward, but that force is less than the force applied to initiate the motion and overcome static friction. The surfaces of objects have what might be described as small ridges. When the ridges of one material come in contact with another surface of the same or different material, friction occurs. If the ridges on one or both of the surfaces becomes more pronounced, the friction, or resistance of movement, increases. These surface ridges might be microscopic, such as with the non-stick Teflon surface of a frying pan. Or the ridges on a surface can be quite large, such as those in the rubber car tire as it meets the pavement. The quantity that expresses the dependence on frictional forces on the particular surface in contact is called the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is represented by the Greek symbol mu. The higher the coefficient of friction of a material, the more force resists motion if two objects are sliding past each other. One important reason why the saucer glides across the snow but slows down when it hits dirt and gravel has a lot to do with the higher coefficient of friction related to the dirt and gravel as compared to the icy, packed snow. It is important to note that friction is proportional to weight. If the weight in the contents of the box were to be doubled, the friction force would be doubled, requiring more applied force to move it. Another force of kinetic friction is rolling or rotational friction. The wheels on the car or skateboard illustrate rolling friction. In order to maximize the performance and durability of the wheels on skateboards, for example, special components called bearings are inserted between the wheel and the metal shaft, thereby greatly reducing the friction where the nylon wheel would have come into contact with the metal shaft. The use of rollers, such as wooden rods placed under a concrete block, 
can reduce the amount of friction by changing to motion from sliding to rolling. An everyday application of rolling friction can be found in the conveyor systems used at airport security checkpoints. Whenever an object moves through a fluid medium like air or water, the fluid provides a resistance to the motion. In order to fly, this jet, like any winged aircraft, is constantly impacted by four forces, weight, lift, thrust, and drag. Friction is only one factor that influences drag. Other critical variables include air density and pressure differentials. When this jet moves through air, the air closest to its surface gets dragged along with it. In turn, that air rubs against the air that it passes. This rubbing applies a force on the jet that is sometimes called friction drag, or skin friction dragging, referring to the outer skin of the aircraft as it comes in contact with the air. In order to minimize skin friction drag, designers and engineers use aerodynamic design principles. In the accompanying student design activity, we are taken through a process of designing a cartoon-like rocket. When a rocket is launched from Earth, it must move upwards through the atmosphere. Therefore, the effect of air resistance must be taken into account for the design. The amount of air resistance that opposes the motion of the rocket is impacted by many variables, particularly the shape of the nose cone, the diameter of the rocket body, because the more surface air means more air resistance, and of course, the speed of the rocket. The faster the rocket, the more air resistance. In order to stay on course and maintain stability, like the one you will design, might include fins. This added surface area, however, creates more drag. In the following technical video, you will be guided through the process of using 123D design to create a rocket. Hopefully this lesson launches you on the way to developing your own designs.